Hi there, welcome to Climbing Terms Explained, part two. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Gordon, Fat Old Climber, and in this video we're going to look at some climbing terms and explain what they mean and maybe what their origin is. Uh, this is part two, so if you missed part one of this video, then if you look up here, there'll be a link to that video. Go and have a look. What are some of the terms you hear at the gym that you're not quite sure what they mean? Drop me a comment if you can think of any. Okay, let's start with barn dooring. Barn dooring is when you swing off the wall around one foot in hand, typically uncontrolled, and it's normally a symptom of your feet not being in as good a position as they can be. I have a video on barn dooring, you know where to look. Bump or bump up is simply making a move with a hand and then making another move with the same hand. Cutting loose is when you are on an overhang typically and your feet come off the climbing holds. It's more often than not something someone does accidentally and a symptom of them perhaps not having a secure enough position with their feet. But sometimes on some climbs, it's the only way you're going to move up to the next hold. Dead point is that point at which when you're moving up with momentum, you can't go any higher. It's the furthest you can reach in a, in a move. It's worthwhile knowing what your dead point is. And I have a video here on a drill that will help you do that. Drop knee is a technique normally used to try and keep your hips in towards the wall whilst allowing a controlled movement up to the next hold. It's also known as an Egyptian. I'm terrible at them. Whenever I try to do a drop knee, my knees bitterly complain, but they're a really good skill to allow you to stay in control and keep your hips in against the wall. Static moves are probably best described as moves in control. Uh, moves that you can do slowly, moves where you can take one hand off the wall and be completely in control as you move it up to the next hold. As opposed to dynamic or dyno. Dynamic and dyno are quite frequently discussed like they're the same thing, but they're not. A dynamic move is any move that you use momentum to swing up to the next hold. As opposed to dyno, which is an all-out leap from one position to the other, typically with at some point neither feet nor hands touching the wall. Dinos are scary if you're not used to them. They're really, really worthwhile practicing. Flagging is, again, a, another technique that allows you to keep your hips in at the wall. It's where, in order to have three points of contact, it's where one leg sticks out to the side and you push your foot on the wall, meaning you have three points of contact, just one of them isn't a hold. It's normally a move you'll make to avoid barn dooring, but it's also a move you can make to get your hips very close into a wall and allow a far further reach. Gaston is more than a character from Beauty and the Beast. It's where you grab typically a, a vertical hold and a hold that's upright with your hand the opposite way from the way you would normally. So your thumb would be down and typically you would be pulling across the body rather than up. Um, you also get a double gast on where both hands are pulling. I can't demonstrate it because I'm holding the camera, but where both hands are pulling in the opposite direction and that pressure is what's keeping you on the wall. A heel hook is when you use the foot hooked over a hold to become like an extra hand. It allows you to pull up or to the side and gives you that extra momentum in some holds. You can get very subtle heel hooks, the kind I do, which are basically only there to generate stability for the next position, or heel, heel hooks where you're pulling yourself to the side using your heel, or the most extreme, where the heel is actually what's pulling you up as you can see in this video. And the opposite of a heel hook is a toe hook. Typically, toe hooks aren't for pulling you up or pulling to the side. They're typically there just 
to hold you in position while you move your hands. Rock over is where you put place a high foot. What you're trying to do is rock over onto that foot. In a more extreme rock over, you're almost sitting on top of your foot. It really allows you to get across and up. I'm terrible at rock overs mainly because my knees hate me. Sit start is when the starting hand holds are low enough that you can actually sit on the mat to reach them. Um, I was always taught that if the hand holds are low enough that you can reach the floor, you should sit on the floor. Smearing is basically where there are no footholds, you use the wall um, and you just press your foot against it, trying to put your heel down as low as possible to maximize the amount of rubber on the wall. It helps if the wall is textured. Another way to think of it is wall walking. A foot swap is when you have one foot on a hold and you bring the other one to join it and swap positions. How difficult it is really depends on how big the hold is. Obviously my foot swaps are more the hopping kind rather than the delicate kind. Campusing when you're on the wall is climbing without the use of your feet. So basically climbing like a monkey. It comes from what you would do working out on a campus board or a fingerboard. The history is quite interesting though. The board was invented by a German climber, Wolfgang Gulich. I'm probably really messing up that name. Wolfgang was a climber in the late 80s. He was training for a very hard climb, a climb that required a lot of finger strength. What he had basically invented was having a small edge that he could just work on his finger strength from. This device was hung in a gym at the university he went to and it was hung in what was called the campus center and the name just stuck. So it became the campus board and campusing as a technique was born and it's something you would do as I say to work out and improve your finger strength or it's a technique you would use to climb where using your feet is impossible. I love that story. If there are any climbing terms I haven't mentioned either in this video or the first video, then drop me a line in the comments and let me know what they are. Hopefully you found this useful and it might help make some of the terms you hear in the climbing gym a wee bit less confusing. If you enjoyed this video, then drop me a like um, and comment. It really, really helps the channel. And again, if you haven't subscribed, then consider subscribing and remember to ring the bell so that YouTube tells you when I drop another video. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video.